Hi everyone, Rachel Adams here. So here's a question that I think is fundamental, given everything that is happening in the world right now and the conversations we are holding salient. Do you really believe that people can change? Or do you secretly believe that certain groups of people will never change outside of your experience of them or your opinion of them? So do you believe that white people will always be racist? Because that's what you believe about white people generally. Or do you believe that black people have a lower intellect because that's what you've always believed about black people anyway? Or do you believe that people of a different sexuality are causing all sorts of curses in the world because that's what you've always believed anyway? Or do you believe that there's no room to create opportunities for people of different abilities or cognitions or ways of being and doing and speaking because, well, those people are not like me anyway? This feels to me like the one of the most important conversations we should be having which is what are the secret belief systems what are the secret programs that we keep running in our heads that are actually co-creating this world that we keep saying we want to change we cannot say in one breath that we want to transform the world and we want for people to behave differently and yet in the same breath we hold to the fundamental beliefs that we have had about the other for time immemorial. Because our intention energizes. Our intention creates conscious and subconscious action in the world. And so if our intention secretly is to continue to believe about people the things we have always believed, then we're not being sincere about wanting for the world to shift. Here's an exercise I'll ask you to do. I came across it um, some time ago. It's an exercise that I believe was, was uh, designed by Delta consultants. Write down the names of the 10 people that you trust the most. And by trust, we mean these are people who you'll be vulnerable with, people who you'll share your deepest um, dr secrets, dreams with, people who, if you are in a hard situation, you will go to. Right, people who you see as safe for you. Write down the name of those 10 people, the names of those 10 people. Now start to categorize them. What gender are they? What race are they? What sexuality are they? What cultural background do they come from? What educational background do they come from? What um, religion do they belong to? What are their personal and social interests? You can make these categories as, you can write these categories, categories as far and, and as wide as you want to. And once that is done, is most of us will start to see that a lot of the people who are in, in our circle of trust look like us, sound like us, feel safe to us. And at a very simple level, this is why the world doesn't change. At a very simple level, we can have all of the sophisticated conversations we want. At a very simple level, this is why the world, in terms of our interracial, intercultural, intergender dynamics, don't shift. Because actually, our intention is not to go beyond our comfort zones. Now, here's the thing about the brain. The brain is a pattern recognition engine. There's something in the brain called the fusiform gyrus, which is a pattern recognition engine. And as it goes about the world doing what it's doing, it's making best guesses about the experiences it's having and the people that it is interacting with. And studies have been done that show the relationship between fusiform gyrus and bias and prejudice. That if you do not have enough quality interactions with people who look different from you, your brain is going to keep informing you that these people are an unsafe category. And so what does that mean? It means that all of us have to start choosing differently. All of us have to start expanding our circle of trust. Now notice we're not, we're, this is not, I'm not talking about people you invite to your home for a dinner once in a while. I'm not talking about, you know, people you say hey to in the, in the workplace. I'm talking about people who are really in your intimate circle of trust. 
because it just isn't about interactions. It's about the quality of the interactions. That's what changes the, the pattern recognition in the brain. And if we're not doing that in low stakes situations, then we cannot be, we then should not be surprised if those, those rec pattern recognitions are not working in high stakes situations, in a life and death situation. Because our brains go, I don't recognize that person signifies harm to me. It feels to me that our greatest contract at this point that we can make with each other is to be committed to deepening and increasing that circle of trust. The last I checked, there were about 184 unconscious biases. 184, the last I checked. And one of those unconscious biases is something called choosing. So here's what we do. We feel that we have a right because, you know, the world is so hard. So I have a right to be with people, with the people who I enjoy, who are comfortable to me, who make me feel, you know, safe in the world. And those are the people I keep close to me. Now, the problem with that choosing is that it, it, it actually also means you are unchoosing certain people. And the more we keep unchoosing certain people, the more we keep perpetuating the world as it currently is. And so we are brought back again to that basic human principle of choice. Who are you choosing? Why do you, what, why do you choose them? And what is the implication of that in our interactions as a global system, as a communal system, as an institutional system, as a religious system? All of these systems that we exist in, that we keep calling systems, we tend to forget that you and I are the system. You and I are the system. And so my invitation is that starting today, really look into where, what is from, you know, racism, sexism, any, any kind of ism in the world, any kind of prejudice, any kind of bias in the world has multiple layers, intrapersonal, what, what is happening inside of you, interpersonal, communal, institutional, systematic, right? There are layers and layers and layers and layers, right? I'm creating circles in my head of all of the different sites of shaping, sites of conditioning. And if we don't start to shift the way we participate in those different sites of conditioning and in those different sites of participation, then change doesn't happen. It's really that simple. And so I'm asking you to remember this. Number one, has, have, you, have you invested in quality interactions that then determine that your pattern recognition can change? Number two, how are you participating in the different sides of shaping of conditioning that you that you are in currently and thirdly do you actually acknowledge that all of us are co-creating this world that we exist in and that that is happening both because of our choosing and our unchoosing of certain people of certain kinds of interactions think about it Think about it. This is one of, it's a very tough conversation because some people, you know, we, we start to say these people are unsafe for us and these people are, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's taxing for me. I am tired of being amongst these people and explaining things. But, but here's the thing. It's a simple biological thing. If we don't increase the exposures, the quality of the exposures, nothing changes. And so we all have work to do. It's going to be awkward initially it's not going to be comfortable initially and so that's why we we call them forced exposures we have to commit to increasing our circles of trust because when we do that if one of us increases our circle of trust by five people who are different to us all across the world then we create the changes that are necessary and it seems to me that this is the thing that hasn't happened i do many diversity workshops and this is the thing i, I come across all of the time that this simple thing, this simple possibility that is available to us when we expand our circle of trust is the thing that people aren't doing.